Aloha, everyone. Welcome to Money Talks. I am your host, Shonda Park, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today. April is National Financial Literacy Month, and on my last show, my guest was Rayanne Ishevez. So we discussed the importance of financial education. She shared where to get it, how to get it, uh, the importance of choosing to become financially educated and just using that and applying that in order to build up a strong financial foundation. So I have Rianne Ishevez back in here in the studio today because we went over um, the layers of the financial foundation. So starting with proper protection and having that protection in case of unforeseen events. And then we moved on to debt management and teaching people that they can get out of debt in half the time or less to become debt free. And then we moved into emergency funds, the importance of having three to six months of your income if if and when some, some kind of emergency happens. And we touched a little bit about investments. However, um, we wanna really expand on that today because it's such a hot topic. So welcome, Rayanne, welcome back to the show. Hi, Shonda, always great to see you. Thank you so much for this opportunity again to be on your show. Thank you. I just want to continue with our uh, with our conversation about financial education from the last time that you were on. And because investment is such a hot topic and most people will ask, well, where do I invest? How do I invest? Why should I invest? Um, what's your take on that? And how do you answer these questions? Yeah, so that's actually a great one. So if you look at the slide, we do have uh, the financial house, right, that you summarized for us. So um, again, proper protection. So like building a house, we want to build our financial house from the ground up. That's why we always say proper protection, meaning um, income replacement, right? And then um, debt management, emergency fund, and investments. And so we actually get that question a lot. Actually, mm -hmm. Shonda, it's quite common. People always ask, where should I invest my money, right? And I think when it comes yeah. to investments, people always think more specifically about um, investment vehicles, right? So right now, like the hot topics that you hear people talk about is, um, you know, investing in the stock market, or you hear a lot about cryptocurrency. Or... That's right. Yeah, so yeah, that's a new one, right? That, I mean, yeah. NFTs, you talk about metaverse, you, put, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's tokens, coins, there's so many different um investment vehicles, right? So I think a lot of times when people think about investment, which is the last layer of our financial house, they always think about specific types of investments. Whereas, you know, for us, our organization, we really want to focus on, again, going back to the financial education, right? Because when we talk about personal finance, it's exactly that it's personal. So when you ask, well, why should I invest? Well, everybody has different goals, different objectives for why they're investing, right? And it could be um, a short-term goal, like over the next few years, they wanna be able to save for um, a, a down payment for their home, they wanna buy a car or whatever their, um, or long-term goals like retirement, right? So mm -hmm. there's different reasons why people want to invest. Now, what we want to share with people is, um, not just thinking about your investment vehicle, but really understanding some of the core concepts that we teach. So if we can have the slideshow, um, the wealth formula. So when it comes to investing, I think this is one of the core concepts that we really want people to understand. So when I first found out about the wealth formula, I was like, oh my gosh, there's an actual formula. Like, isn't that great news that there's actually a formula that many of us can follow to be able to build wealth, right? Oh yeah, so I think the, it gives... book. Even the children's book. They should create one, put it in a children's book. And that's the first book that we should have our children read when they first start reading. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because you know, like when you look at this formula, right? One something on uh, one of the concepts on the formula is um, time. So the formula, mm -hmm. the wealth formula says, we need to have money, we need to start saving money. And then yes. of course, time, time can be uh, our best friend mm -hmm. and, um, or it can actually be our enemy too, right? right. Um, depending on how 
it's used when it, when it comes to building wealth. And then we look at a positive or negative rate of return. So mm -hmm. when we talk about rate of return, we're really talking about interest rate. Um, and the reason why we say positive or negative is because you know, again, we have to ask ourselves, where are we saving our money? Are we getting a positive return on our money or a negative return on our money? Are we um, actually making money or losing money, right? And, uh, and then we have to also factor in inflation, right? So you see minus inflation minus taxes. And these yeah. two, you know, inflation and tax, we can't really control. However, if we understand how it impacts our wealth, we can plan around it, right? I know last time we talked about um, inflation, right? At, at the last show, we talked about how high inflation is right now, mm -hmm. right? Um, we're like at an extremely high inflation. Yeah, all time high. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I actually just came back from... Um, south san francisco and i thought our gas prices here in hawaii are pretty high you know like upwards of like five dollars plus uh, yeah. when i was in south san francisco um actually took a picture of it because i wanted to show everybody but it, their gas prices are like seven dollars right? oh, wow. and so i know so you know so that again gives us a, an idea of um inflation we know that you know sometimes goods and services uh, will Ha, will cost more, which means less purchasing power. So then yes. you can really see how that can really take away from our ability to build wealth if we don't pay attention to it. Because when we look at, well, what's the rate of um, inflation and are we beating it with the interest rate that we're getting or the rate of return that we're getting on our savings and investments, right? right? So again, we can't control it, but we can plan around it. And then of course, we talk about um, taxes too, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we can't control the tax rate. So, however, we can control how our money is taxed, which I know we'll kind of cover a little bit more um, a little later today. Okay. So, great. that's in a nutshell, that's the wealth formula. Awesome. And we both know that money, of course, you know, we have to start there and money and time. So, we understand the importance of that. And I started working at a young age. I want to say I was 15 and um, had I had this wealth formula, maybe my mindset would have been different. I don't know. It's hard to say. I didn't grow up with much. So my very first job being that my parents weren't able to afford a lot of things that I want, that I wanted, of course, they provided for my needs. However, a lot of things that I wanted, they couldn't afford. So when I got my first job, I basically spent all my money because now I was able to afford all the things that I wanted. So I didn't start at a young age because I didn't have this information. So I didn't have have um, that money saved and invested over a long period of time. So what's your thoughts on that? So I'm really glad that you brought that up because on the first two things on the wealth formula is money and time, right? Yes. So, you know, you started working at an uh, in high school. So did I. I actually started working in high school as well. And I think it's pretty common. Like people start uh, their first experience of money is earning it through a job right and right. um again like most people we don't really grow up with having financial education and so when you look at the those two things on the wealth formula right it won't work if you don't have one or or the other so for example like you said you started working in high school can you imagine you know like if so you had you were young you had a lot of time to grow and save your money however if you're not saving it then it doesn't work right? <laughs> exactly and, yes and and i think like for most people it's it's kind of the opposite where we think okay i'm gonna start saving when um i pay off my student loans and i pay off all my credit card debt or when the kids are grown up you know i can really start to save for and invest for my future however now when we look at the wealth formula we're looking at okay well you know now we've delayed right the time to, um, to leverage time to grow our money right yes. and so now what we have to do is we actually have to save more money to catch up catch right up. so yeah. you can see that one won't work without the other
Right, right. right. And then, of course, in addition to that, where are you saving your money? You know, um, what kind of return are you getting? So it's not so much, you know, again, going back to your original question, where or how to start investing, but do we under, do we have the basic foundation and money habits to start to, to, to move towards building our wealth? Yes, exactly. And moving down in that wealth formula, can you expand on the rate of return? And can you give us an example of how the rate of return impacts your wealth? Yeah, so, you know, the rate of return is a big one. You know, so one of the core concepts that we really want people to understand when it comes to interest rate is actually how your money can double, right? So if we look at the next slide, there's what we call a rule of 72. So mm -hmm. this, um, this discovery was made by Albert Einstein. So we all know Albert Einstein as a genius, right? And um, he actually discovered that if you take the number 72 and divide it by the interest rate, that's how long it will take for your money to double. Right. So when now we talk about understanding how money can work for us, this is really the greatest. Um, this is understanding rule of 72, how interest is compounded. This is mm -hmm. how money is working for us. So in this first example, right, 72 divided by 6%, that means that every 12 years, right, our money nearly doubles. Okay. So again, let's say, for example, Shonda, you were, you know, um, you put away, you earn $10,000 at a summer job, right, in high school. Yeah. So if we, if we could take you way back in high school again, right? <laughs> so imagine yeah. you were to save um, the 10000 that you earn, like, in your summer job, yes. right? And let's say, um, let's say even younger than some, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, let's say you're 12 years old, right? So now, <laughs> fast forward 12 years later. <laughs> I know, <laughs> younger than high school, right? And for some people, they, they do we'll start, work um, you know, working. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So let's say 12 years old, 12 years later at 24 years old, your money would double. This is assuming that we don't add any more to it. So now when you look at this, your 10,000, 12 years later become 20,000, over 20,000, right. right? And then another 12 years later, um, it doubles again. So this is incredible. Again, most times we only know how to make money work for us, but understanding how um, compound interest and the rule of 72, we can see how money is working for us. So now the big question is um, how many, you know, 6% sounds pretty generous, right? Considering, you know, you think about where typically, where do you think most people save their money, Shonda? I would say in the bank and, you know, some, sometimes there's people that that's the only place that they save. And even for when they have kids, right. Um, the kids have their huge first birthday party, all the birthdays and Christmases after, and a lot of them, they just save it in the bank. So I was just thinking about this because of the rule of 72 and the interest that, that the bank pays maybe about 0 0.01, 0 0.02, but say, you know, just to make it for easy numbers, say the bank pays 1% interest. So it would take that money for the child to double in 72 years. And how many 72 years does a person have, right? To wait for their money to double. Yeah, exactly, right? So, you know, just understanding this super simple formula, right? We yeah, can see genius. now, okay, we can pay a little bit more attention of where we're saving our money, right? So, you know, if we're only saving in the bank, then we can expect that, okay, every 72 years, our money will double. And so, you know, I would, I always tell people, okay, wherever you're saving your money now, take a look at, well, what interest rate are you earning, right? Because the higher the interest rate you're earning, the, the faster your so money can double. So like, yeah. if you're, if you have, you know, an 8% account, your money will double every nine years. So it, again, same example, your money has an opportunity, opportunity to double one more time, right? Versus um, when you look at every nine years, or even, you know, 10%, um, every 7.2 years, mm -hmm. your money would double, right? So, you yeah. know, this is, I always tell people, look at where you're saving your money, and then take the rule of 72, 
and um, divided by what you're earning. And then you can really see how your money is working for you. So when you look at the wealth formula and you plug it in, right? Okay, how much money am I saving? How much time do I have to save? And, you know, what kind of return am I getting? Okay, that and, is, you know, and as we know, and, and, yeah, and know it know exactly how long it will take for your money to double, because that helps people to plan for their retirement. Absolutely. And so, you know, we really want to utilize, you know, these core concepts to apply to our finances, right? And, and because interest rate is so important, there's other ways that actually um, where interest rate is involved, right? So can you think of that, anywhere else where we have interest? Yeah. Credit card, loans, mortgage, um, you know, it, it, it works the same. I mean, against us in that way, but you can use the rule of 72 to figure out how many years it's going to take for your debt to double, right? And when you talk about interest, you know, you use certain examples of 10%. We would be lucky to find a credit card with a 10% interest. So we're looking at an average yeah. from 18 to 24%, right? Uh, how many years would it take for your debt to double if your credit card is at 24%? Yeah, so, you know, 72 divided by 24, that means that every three years, your debt would double, right? So again, looking at why we say positive or negative rate of return, let's say, you know, you're, you're actually, your debt is earning a higher interest, right? Which yeah. is really impacting your ability to build wealth because, mm -hmm. you know, all of that, um, all of your money is going to be interest. towards your and to interest, right? So, you know, um, it's my, money can work for us or it can also, or interest rate, I should say. The interest rate, um, depending on how it's applied, can work for us to help us build our wealth, right? Or it can work against us to really yeah. deplete okay. our wealth. Yes. So the next layer, let's talk about uh, inflation in terms of the wealth formula. So, you know, with, when you look at the wealth formula, right, again, you want to make sure that the wherever you're saving your money, you want to make sure you're at least build, um, beating inflation. So I know you mentioned, you know, you read somewhere where, you know, 8.5%, right? Yeah, that's crazy. So, so it's kind of the same thing that can erode our wealth, right, when it comes to having negative or, or our, um, our rate of return on uh, it's not our rate of return. Actually, we're making uh, others wealthier, right? Because the interest rate is being paid somewhere else. Um, but we want to make sure that the interest that we're earning, at least um, you want to beat inflation, right? So you can't control it, but we have to be aware of it. We have to understand that it's so important to pay attention to where you're putting your money because um, of things like inflation. And so, you know, I just want to give you a quick example too of, you know, really the cost of not being aware of our finances, right? Um, I think I shared with this with you the last time, Shonda, you know, I have two very specific client examples that I just want to share. I'm um, this young lady, very intelligent, very brilliant. Um, who, she's from Hawaii, but decided like, you know, most Hawaii students, they want to go off to the mainland and experience, you know, um, going to college in the mainland, right? And um, so she went to, she ended up going to school in the mainland for one semester. Her initial loan was $10,000, right? And, you know, fast forward. Um, so if college didn't work out. She only ended up going to, um, to school for one semester. And four years later, actually her student loan debt was close to 30000 because of the interest that accumulated over time. So it tripled right. in four years. Her debt tripled in four years. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, so just being unaware of like, you know, um, her, her finances and not even knowing that that was accumulating over time. And mm -hmm. which, you know, brings me to my next example too. another family, you know, they're in their um, retirement stage. Right. So they're planning for their or I'm sorry, they just retired. So they're planning, you know, their their this season in their life and they wanted to make sure that, you know, they 
plan properly. And so, you know, one of the things that we didn't um, touch up too much on was um, estate planning, right? So when we look at the financial house, again, the bottom layer is proper protection. So we talked a lot about how we can replace our income, but also part of that protection is estate planning, being able to protect our assets. And so when they were doing their estate planning, part of that process was, you know, um, their title report. So one of the things that they realized, you know, with uh, when they pulled their title report was that there was actually a lien on their property. Right. So for debts that they thought were taken care of years ago, you know, because sometimes we do our best, right? We work hard, we save for our future. Sometimes, you know, we come into situations where life happens and, you know, we um, need a little bit of help. So they actually went through like a loan modification process. And and because during that time they were struggling financially, they hired, um, you know, a third party company to help them take care of their debts and to modify their their mortgage loan. So long story short, what ended up happening was it was not taken care of, you know, and um, a lien was placed on their property. And, you know, when we talk about being able to protect your assets, if we were not aware of what was happening, they could have gone years for, and the debt that um, on this property would have continued to balloon. So their original debt was about 20000 and now, um, a few years later, for about forty five thousand, right? And, and so when I think about the original debt, what year? I, like, how many years ago was that? When they ran into trouble? So this is about ten years ago. Ten years ago, and um, they mm-hmm. you're saying that it was a, a third party company. It was a third par- party company because they felt like they didn't know what. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go. They didn't have any financial education, right? What was the advice that was given to them at that time? So, so they were told to ignore calls, ignore letters, don't pay your bills, right? Because oh. they were going to handle everything on their end. Wow. And so unfortunately, again, um, not, you know, they're fast forward. They thought it was taken care of because their credit is great they had no issue until we were they were in their phase of retiring and really doing their estate planning where they found all this out and thank goodness you know now because they were introduced to our campaign and they understand about being able to protect their assets right um they started doing that part of the planning and that's where they they found out you know um this was happening with their property. So can you imagine if, you know, they went years and years and years, they didn't do any proper protection with the state planning, um, that debt would have ballooned and it would have probably been such a nightmare, you know, for inheriting um, the property, you know. You know, they don't plan, especially at retirement age, they don't plan on moving. They're going to live in their home for the rest of their life. So how much people would actually pull their own title report Right. So without pulling their title report, they wouldn't have even known that their debt was accumulating. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, that's that's definitely one thing that we. Yeah. So, you know, again, big on financial education and being aware of, you know, really taking a comprehensive look. So sometimes when it comes to building wealth, it's not just like, oh, I'm going to earn all this interest and make money quick in these types of investments. It's really taking a look at everything. Exactly. And taking a look at everything that building um, the wealth formula, let's take a look at that last layer, which is taxes. So who knows what day today is? <laughs> yes, the, the big day, right? The tax big day. day. So, yeah. you know, um, our that slide with taxation, you know, we just want to show really quickly that you, you know, with this formula, Again, you can't control the tax rate. However, you can control how your money is taxed, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us have tax now accounts, um, tax later accounts, but most of us do not have tax advantage accounts, right? So we always tell you, ask people, where do you keep your money and how is it being taxed, right? Because although we cannot control the tax rates, we can control where our money is being taxed, right? Because we all know that tax now like right around this time, tax season, you know, you've got to submit those forms that you paid taxes on those gains in the tax now accounts and right. then the tax later accounts. 
is basically just deferring taxes for later. And then your tax advantage is really being able to um, control the tax rates that you pay now. It's like if you were a farmer, Shonda, and you had, you know, would you rather pay taxes on your seed or your crop? I would rather pay taxes on the seeds. Yeah, so paying taxes on the seed is like being able to control what the taxes you pay now because you know what the tax rates are. And, right. you know, a lot of the conversations now is it's not a matter of how high the taxes will go. It's I mean, or if the taxes will go up or down, it's how high the taxes will go. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. you know, um, so tax again, you know, we're not be, tax advisors. Yeah, but tax advantage basically means possibly never taxed right upon distribution. Yes, absolutely. And so, you know, um, I would encourage everybody, you know, again, we're not tax advisors, but taking a look at how your money is being taxed and really I encourage people to take um, our workshops, you know, these workshops that we have, which is on the next slide there, um, you know, these resources available for anyone who really want to expand their knowledge um, in their personal finance. Right, so these are some of the topics we cover and just understanding where your money is going is important so that you can allocate more money to pay down your debt faster and also build, then it kind of has that positive effect, right? Um, yes. You can start to build your emergency fund, you can save more um, for uh, your investments. So these are great resources that we have that we, we just want to share with everybody because again, when it comes down to your personal finance, every single one of us has different goals. It's just really understanding what these core concepts are uh, uh, through the workshop to help you really plan so that you can fulfill you know, your, your long-term or short-term financial goals. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing all of that. And for everyone that joined us, thank you for joining us. And Rianne, um, information is going to pop at the end. You can contact Rianne or you can contact me and find out where you can get this education, where you can, where and how you can take these workshops. So please feel free to contact us. And again, thank you for joining us. This is April National Financial Literacy Month. With financial education, you can learn how to go from a net worth of zero to millions. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next month. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.